Okay, this is our introduction to the uh, online anger management education course. Um, in this video, I'm just going to cover uh, some of the basic information concerning anger management from a, just as an introduction. And then in upcoming videos, as well as the readings, we will flesh out some of these ideas. Okay, uh, first of all, I always like to start with a couple definitions. Uh, associated with um, words that we use with anger management. Um, and three words in particular are um, anger, aggression, and hostility. So we talk about anger. Again, anger is the emotion we feel um, when we get upset about something or we feel that our rights has been violated. The thing about anger, however, is that anger in and of itself is not bad it's not negative some people um believe that um anger is a problem and anger causes problems in our lives but in fact it's actually our behavior associated with the anger or our um reaction to the anger that ends up getting us in trouble but it's not because we happen to become angry angry by itself can be positive or negative depending on how we use it. Um, for example, um, any significant change that has came throughout uh, history and society has come due to someone uh, being upset about the way that the situation was and felt that they needed a change. And their anger motivated them to take action and sometimes gave them the courage to take action and to do things uh, differently or make other people do things differently, including the government. So um, when we talk about anger or for the purpose of this class, we're not trying to eliminate anger from our lives or we're not trying to, uh, let's say, learn how to never get angry. Um, I don't think that that is possible that you're never gonna get angry, nor uh, would it be beneficial? Because there are some things that we should get angry about. However, we should um, address those issues in the appropriate manner. And that's part of what the anger management is all about. So anger, again, is just the emotion uh, that we uh, have when we become upset or we feel that our rights have been violated. Another word that's closely associated with anger and sometimes used interchangeably would be aggression. Now, aggression is the behavior, right? So anger is the emotion. Aggression is the behavior that we display when we're upset. And uh, generally, aggression is going to be negative, and that's what we're going to get in trouble for when we act out aggressively rather than assertive. So aggression can be in the form of verbal such as um, uh, using profanity or calling someone out of their name. Um, it can be threats uh, directed towards the person or people. It can be uh, physical aggression, such as uh, kicking, hitting, biting the person, shooting, stabbing, and so on and so forth. But aggression is generally what we get in trouble for, not the anger. So one of the things or one of our objectives in anger management is to learn how to deal with situation in a non-aggressive manner. And it's also uh, not helpful if we're passive. Passive is uh, basically just allowing people to do whatever and to uh, just kind of run over you. That's also not helpful because ultimately, while we may not initially get in trouble, uh, from being passive, ultimately it's going to escalate our anger. So if you are uh, someone and you're just being quiet and, and not standing up for yourself, eventually you're going to uh, blow a fuse, right? We have to, uh, at some point, we have to be able to address the issue. Otherwise, it becomes overwhelming. 
So while we don't want to be aggressive, we also don't want to uh, be passive. Now, the other word associated with anger that's very important is hostility. Hostility is an attitude. So again, anger is a emotion. Aggression is a behavior and hostility is an attitude that we have. <clears throat> and the way that I like to explain um, hostility, I like to use the idea of get gangs or race, right? And, and the reason I use these two is because um, they're pretty much going to be familiar with anybody that hear them. You know, it's not some uh, uh, far-fetched concept that someone's going to have to put a lot of work to figure out. Um, so in the case of gangs, for example, um, when someone uh, joins a gang, whether they get jumped into their gang or however they get into their gang, one of the first things that they're going to learn uh, as a part of that gang is who their enemies are, who, the, who are the people that their particular gang does not get along with. And over time, because your gang don't get along with them, you begin to develop a certain amount of uh, a certain attitude towards this group that your gang don't get along with. Now, it's it's different than anger because generally um, when we get angry with someone, it's someone that we have that have done something to us or maybe even they've done something to someone else and we observe them do it and we're angry with them be due to their actions, whereas hostility is just a general attitude of dislike, right? We we dislike this person, this person or people, and have a negative opinion about them. So um, the reason, or one of the reasons that that's important, is that if I have hostility towards a particular individual or a particular group of people, then it is highly likely that. I'm going to become angry with them much faster than I would with anyone else, right? Because I already have this level of hostility towards them and I feel a certain way. Therefore, um, anything that they say and do, I'm going to interpret it in the worst possible way. So um, again, whether uh, the gang or race is the same thing. And, and I say gangs and race because, you know, some of us grow up um, with, uh, uh, certain feelings or we're taught certain things about uh, particular individuals from uh, other racial groups. And we may, over time, we begin to internalize these messages that people are giving us about these groups. And we develop, similar to gangs, this attitude, this negative attitude or this negative general dislike for this a person or group of people over time. And again, it's going to cause us to um, become upset with this person or people faster than we would with anyone else. And it increases the likelihood that we're going to be willing to act out violently against this uh, person or these people, which is obviously not helpful. So um, anger the emotion that we feel when we become upset or we feel our rights have been violated. Aggression is the behavior that we display when we react rather than respond to anger. And uh, hostility is an attitude that we develop uh, towards uh, people that we don't like. And all of these are important in the, in the context of anger management. And all of these words are sometimes used interchangeably, such as we may hear uh, someone say, oh, he approached this individual in a very hostile manner. But in reality, he, re he maybe approached him in a very aggressive manner, right? Because hostile is the attitude. Now, in general conversation, I don't, you know, I'm not going to nitpick over words that someone chooses to use. But for the purpose of purposes of these lessons, I would like us to make a distinction between these words because I think that it gives us a, a clearer idea of what exactly 
um, we're trying to address. And also to a, a, a better understanding of what we're trying to explain, if we're trying to explain what we feel towards uh, someone, if someone asks us, why did we do uh, a certain thing or why do we feel a certain way? It just kind of expands our vocabulary and as, as well as our understanding, right? And I would also uh, encourage you, uh, if you do have an anger management issue, to do further reading. Don't just, not just uh, the, the things that you're going to learn in the course that you're going to do with me, but I would encourage you to do further readings. Um, there are numerous uh, books out there that will help you with your uh, anger. There are uh, free material as well as some books that you can purchase. Um, one particular book uh, that's published on the SAMHSA website uh, is Anger Management for Substance Abuse, or, excuse me, Substance Use Disorder and Mental Health Clients, right? And they have the therapy manual as well as the uh, workbook that you can download for free online, right? And that's on the SAMS Hub website, S-A-M-H-S-A, -S the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. Um, they have a lot of free material for substance abuse, uh, substance use disorders, as well as uh, anger management and other issues that, that you may be addressing in recovery. Also, if you happen to be uh, counselor, let's say, or you plan on getting into counseling, they have a lot of very helpful material um, that you can use to uh, help you uh, to further your career, um, personal development, or again, address your, your anger issues if that's what you're trying to do. Um, so I, I would definitely suggest that you uh, read the material and and anything that we um, discuss in this course as well, I would advise you to uh, practice some of the concepts or maybe certain key points, um, writing down certain key points so that you can incorporate them into your life. Because the thing about it is this, um, we won't do the things that are not familiar to us, right? We do the things that that we do regularly, things that have become a habit. And that's why some of us have we have be, we have developed a habit of acting out aggressively or acting out violently with our anger. And, you know, maybe there are things that we picked up as far back as our childhood. But these are things that we have done habitually. So now they come second nature. So instead of um, us thinking about a situation and trying to address it in the most uh, appropriate way, we tend to lash out with anger because this is what we have done habitually. So now we're trying to learn new habits, right? And that's the purpose of this course. And this this course right here that, that you're um, uh, uh, dealing with, this is uh, this is my basic uh, course, right? So this is this is just the beginning, and there will be uh, other courses more advanced. Uh, where we will address the issues that are contained in this course, but we will expand on uh, some of the conversations that we have uh, about particular aspects of anger. Moving forward, so um, talking about anger, as I mentioned, this is an um, introductory video. So um, I'm going to just mention some, some basic concepts and over the, the following videos, we will flesh out some of those ideas. Okay, uh, so um, with anger, some of the things that we're gonna address are the events and cues, right? So when we talk about events and cues, these are things that have a tendency to get us upset. Events are, are like events or provocative uh, situations or um, events that people do that we, tend to interpret in a negative way and we get upset about. Cues are the signs that we have that we're becoming angry. So as you um, begin to uh, get angry, right? Uh, something will happen and we will begin to interpret what 
um, happened in that situation. Generally, we will tend, have a tendency to, to interpret it in the most negative way. Now, also, I should say also, um, because we talk about an event that happened and then we interpret it and we begin to get angry based on our interpretation. But something else that should be taken into consideration is our individualized worldview, which I'm not going to get too deep into that, but just know that we all have a certain way that we look at the world, whether positive or negative uh, way that we look at the world, um, the ideas and things that we think that are possible for us. And, and, and this worldview, the reason why it's important is because it will, um, before anything ever happens, right, we will be in a certain state of mind that may not be helpful to our situation just based on the way that we look at the world. So um, I need to have a clear understanding if I have, uh, let's say, if I operate according to a victim mentality, let's say, right? Because if I do operate according to a victim mentality, then it's highly likely that I'm going to have a lot of issues with my anger. And it's going to be very difficult for me to um, even educate myself and to address these anger issues because if I think that I'm a victim, then I think that my anger and my aggression is justified, which it's not, right? We, we do have a right to defend ourselves, but we have to do it in the most appropriate way. So when we're talking about cues, we have um, uh, physical cues, behavioral cues, uh, emotional cues, and cognitive cues. And, and so out of these four cue categories, it, it is the behavioral cues is the only one out of the four Q categories that are observable by, <clears throat> by other people. And sometimes people will get um, uh, the physical cues and the behavioral cues, they will uh, get those mixed up. Or if you ask someone um, what was a, a physical cue, what are the physical cues that they're becoming angry, they will have a tendency to, to mention a behavioral cue, right? And the behaviors are like balling up your fist, pacing back and forth, slamming the door, um, yelling or screaming or such, right? These are behavioral cues and they can be observed by other people. Physical cues are those things that um, affect us, such as your heart rate beginning to increase, you starting to sweat. You know, there are things that are physically happening to your body, involuntary things that are happening to your body. And you know that they're happening or you can tell if you're mindful, you can tell that they're happening, but other people cannot see them. Right. And then we have emotional cues. Now, the reason that emotional cues are important is because when we're talking about emotional cues, anger is considered as a secondary emotion. So that means that there are other more primary emotions that lead us to anger. And we need to understand what those primary emotions are if we want to be able to address our anger. And the reason that our uh, one of the reasons that anger is a secondary emotion is because anger is one of our defense mechanisms against feeling vulnerable. That's why when you see like fighters or boxers, for example, they will have a tendency to pump themselves up when they're getting ready for a fight because um, they're, they are getting into their zone. And what are you doing when you're pumping yourself up? You're getting yourself angry. Now, not to an unreasonable degree, but you are, in fact, getting yourself in a somewhat angry state so that you get in your zone and you have the courage and to step into the ring and to handle your business in that situation. OK, and then um, we have the cognitive cues. So cognitive, um, anytime you hear the word cognitive, you know, think of like cognitive behavioral therapy, right? So cognitive is talking about the way that we think, right? So the cognitive cues are the thought patterns that will come up as we begin to get angry. Sometimes even before we recognize the fact that we're becoming angry, we start having these negative images or negative fantasies in our minds that um, will let us know that it's that, hey, maybe I need to find out what's kind of going on with me emotionally because I'm having these negative thoughts, which are not helpful. Um, okay, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the aggression cycle as well, um, because again, as we uh, get angry, it's not the case where 
uh, like when I was growing up, I just felt that I was just angry, you know, okay, I, something happened, I'm angry, and it's just automatic, zero to 10, automatic, but that's not the way it happened. Everything happens with a process. There's a process for everything. And if I begin to recognize the process, then again, I can begin to address the issues associated with anger that is causing problems for me in my life that are sending me to prison or putting me on probation or parole or causing me to have, um, you know, uh, domestic uh, um, violence type issues and stuff. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the ABCD model. Um, uh, we're going to deal with, you know, general, uh, concepts, concerned, uh, uh, assertiveness and, uh, conflict resolution. And, and we're going to have, uh, a little bit, but we're going to talk a little bit about, uh, the family in general. And there'll be some other topics that we will, um, cover, uh, as we, uh, go through the, the different lessons, right. Um, and hopefully, um, you will be able to get some benefit out of these lessons. Um, I personally am someone who have had um, issues with my anger. Uh, and the things that I'm talking to you about are things definitely that were able to help me. Um, my anger led me to prison as a juvenile. Um, I was back and forth in juvenile hall, juvenile placement. And ultimately, at the age of 17, I got a life sentence and ended up serving uh, 21 years in prison, right, due to me not handling my anger appropriately. And then even after incarceration, it continued to cause problems because I handled my anger inappropriately. And now, um, as I um, use some of the techniques that I will um, be sharing with you, I have been able to be out here in the community. I am no longer on any kind of uh, supervision, probation, parole, or anything like that. Um, I have my own uh, business. I work also as a, a manager for an alternative sentencing program. Um, and I have a, a several different uh, things that are going on in my life, and things are, are going as well as the effort that I put into them, right? And, um, and and we'll talk about that a little bit as we uh, address the different lessons, because um, as this is obviously an anger management um, education course, however, I will discuss other um, issues, right? Because it's those other issues or those peripheral issues sometimes that uh, lead us to anger. And therefore, we will address some of those. I will address um, some of the things, um, you know, so I will mention briefly, uh, some of the things concerning the political climate and how that contributes to our anger. Sometimes, um, the things that we see on TV or in the media and stuff like that. So, um, as we move forward with the courses, we will, um, hopefully gain the knowledge that, um, will keep all of us um, out of undesirable situations such as uh, prisons, jails, and other types of institutions. So again, I would encourage you to um, practice, maybe take notes and practice the uh, things that you learn in these lessons. Also, at the end of each lesson, um, there will be a quiz and uh, you will have a uh, final quiz as well. All right. I just wanted to add a couple things to the video um, discussing the four styles of communication. And um, generally, when we communicate, uh, people uh, communicate in, in four basic styles. So we have passive communication. We have passive aggressive communication, aggressive communication and assertive communication. And the reason why I wanted to add this to this initial video um, because I think these are foundational matters when we're talking about our communication styles and how we uh, address issues with uh, people. So um, when we're referring to passive communication, um, we're talking about someone who is basically uh, being passive in their communication style and not really standing up for themselves. They may accept anything that anyone else um, 
brings to them or has to say or whatever that other person's uh, opinion is um, as to uh, what they what the other person may want them to do. And it's very important, um, you know, that we have or we develop uh, assertive communication and which we'll get to that. But again, passive, you're kind of you could think of it as kind of like the yes man, like people ask them to do uh, things and they may be things that they don't want to do, but they just do them anyway because they don't want to piss anybody off or hurt their feelings or whatever the case may be. But ultimately, this ends up building up resentment within you if you're constantly doing other people's bidding and doing everything that they want you to do, even though you don't want to do it. So it's, it's not going to be very helpful for you. And it is likely going to contribute to your anger management issues. So again, passive is when we just allow people to just kind of run over us and we are basically acting as people pleasers. Then we have uh, also passive aggressive uh, communication. So with passive aggressive, um, and they call it passive aggressive because it's thought that passive aggressive uh, communication incorporates a little bit of both, both uh, passive and aggressive behavior, uh, or excuse me, in, in the communication. So the passive is that the person will communicate or make statements in such a way as to not uh, have anyone get pissed off with them. So they may agree with whatever the person is saying, or maybe the person is ask, asking them to do something for them. And so they tell them like, oh, hey, can you um, take me to the store? Or will you be able to take me to work in the morning or something like that? And the person's like, sure, no problem. Hey, I got you. It's, you know, it's everything's good. And then when it comes down to it, they don't do it. Right. And, 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 and they'll pretend that they forgot or they'll make up some other excuse why they didn't do it. But the problem is that they had no intention on doing it in the first place. Now, every time that someone says they're going to do something and they don't do it, we should not automatically think that the person did it intentionally, but sometimes it is intentional. And sometimes in the person's uh, tone, body posture, and there'll be other signs that the person really don't want to do what it, you know, what it is that we're asking them to do. Um, and so they will take on this passive aggressive type of communication. Um, it also can come out, let's say if you're living in a house with someone, uh, maybe a friend or associate or even with your family. And so uh, the person doesn't clean up after themselves or don't do the dishes when they're supposed to. Or maybe they leave uh, dishes in, in places where they're not, you know, where they where they shouldn't be. And so the person may go and let's say take the dishes and put them on their bed or put the, the dishes in some place that they know it's going to piss off the other person. But they never actually say anything. And the person may ask like, hey, you're OK. Is, you know, is everything all right or whatever? And they're like, sure. Yeah, everything's OK. But everything's not really OK. So they continue to play games with the with the passive aggressive behavior. So they're saying that things are okay. That's the passive part. But then they go and they put the dishes on the person's bed or they do something else that they know is going to upset the person. And that's the aggressive part. So we want to be careful and we all can, can do this, right? And all of these things that we're going to mention, the passive, passive, aggressive, aggressive, and uh, assertive, we all can use any of these styles, but generally we will, we will, uh, have one primary style that we use the most, right? And and hopefully you can identify what your style is as we uh, talk about these different concepts. Okay, um, then the next thing uh, I'm going to mention is the aggressive uh, communication. So aggressive, you know, we're, we're thinking aggression, right? So in anger management and, you know, earlier uh, we talked a little bit about aggression and what aggression is and aggression generally uh, relates to our actions and acts of violence and stuff like that, but we could have more aggressive type uh, communication as well, right? Um, and when we are, let's say, uh, approaching the person uh, and and threatening them in our speech, or maybe uh, coming at them very uh, in a very bad way, uh, maybe using uh, profanity, cussing them out, uh, calling them out of their name, and stuff like that. Um, and generally what this aggressive communication is going to do 
it will generally escalate the situation to make the situation worse. So instead of helping us to resolve the issue, it ends up making a situation worse. And a lot of times we um, uh, use this aggressive communication sometimes because we've already allowed ourselves to become angry. But sometimes uh, you'll see people that always uh, seem to act and speak aggressively. And a lot of time that is that is based on fear. <clears throat> Contrary to what a lot of people think, a lot of people will see someone who is very aggressive or, or even very violent. You know, they like to fight all the time, always getting into it with people and stuff like that. And they're always walking around like a tough guy. And a lot of people think that, oh, this guy, you know, he has courage. He's, you know, he's down for the cause or whatever. But a lot of times that that aggression and, and always acting out aggressively is related to fear and the different types of fear, right? It may not be so much that the person is afraid that somebody's going to beat them up, let's say, but we can also be afraid uh, and, and have a lot of anxiety attached with just communicating with people and, and, and feeling that our message is not going to be across that we don't uh, necessarily articulate ourselves as well as other people do. So we end up, um, uh, you know, getting angry, right? Because we feel vulnerable that um, we're not going to be able to get our message across properly. And again, anger is a defense mechanism against feeling vulnerable, right? And so anything that makes us feel vulnerable, makes us feel sad, make us feel lonely, make us feel disrespected and things like that, right? We don't, we don't like to hold on to those feelings for very long. So we begin, you know, going through certain mental processes and, and, and the anger begins to rise as we, um, you know, interpret uh, whatever the situation is. So if it's us trying to, whether it's us trying to communicate uh, with someone, or if it's uh, someone has said or done something to us that we feel uh, they shouldn't have said or done, um, either way, um, we 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 feel a certain way about that. Also, you know, you might be someone who has problems. Let's say with the family. Maybe you've been involved in in even domestic violence type situations and stuff. Um, with with the family member and um, and and generally especially with family a lot of times the one of the things that make it spin out of control is the fact that we care we actually care about these people and so the things that they say will hurt us more than what anyone else is saying so the things that other people say don't feel as hurtful or don't feel as bad as the things that we hear from our you know family and loved ones so um, we want to think about that uh, when we begin to get upset uh, with our family and loved ones, especially if we're someone that have a tendency to act out aggressively. Right. So we want to think about, OK, um, one, uh, why am I getting upset and am I really upset about what this person has just said or done or am I hurt? Right. So am I actually angry at the person for what they said or am I hurt? And generally it's going to be uh, the latter because. The, again, the thing is, anger is a secondary emotion, as I mentioned earlier in the video. Uh, anger is a secondary emotion, which means that it will be, um, it, you know, it will generally be prompted by one of the more primary emotions. And these primary emotions are going to be those that make us feel weak and vulnerable. Um, so the anger comes up to help us to uh, uh, to feel strong and not. Uh, you know, feel weak or feel afraid and, and helps us to go ahead and, 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 and step forward and face whatever it is that we need to face at that particular time. OK, um, then the next thing that we have. So, again, we got passive communication where we just are just kind of a yes man or a people pleaser and, and, and just accept whatever people say and just kind of let them have their way with us and just kind of run over us or whatever, with whatever their opinion is. Then we have the passive aggressive uh, communication where we um, where we're passive in that we don't challenge. We don't necessarily challenge the person and what they have to say or challenge uh, their opinion about us or what they uh, want us to do. Uh, but and, and we just kind of agree with them. But then we go back and do something different. So our words and our actions ends up not agreeing. And sometimes they can even see it in our body posture where we're pretending in our speech by our speech that everything is OK. 
but it's clear from our facial expressions, body posture, uh, tone of voice and pitch that things are not okay. Um, then the aggression again is what we're trying to get away from and what's most, most commonly uh, the thing that we tend to get in trouble for, whether aggressive behavior, or as we mentioned uh, here, we're talking about communication specifically. So the aggressive communication can be, uh, again, us uh, becoming very aggressive in our speech to the person, whether yelling and screaming at the person, calling them out of their name, uh, 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 saying very foul uh, things to them or even uh, threatening them, threatening to, to cause harm to them and stuff like that. And, and this aggression, aggressive communication or even uh, if we go to aggressive behavior, these are the things that we generally get in trouble for. These are the things that send us to prison. These are the things that uh, cause us to get violation of parole or probation or what have you. Right. So we don't want to do that. We don't want to um, uh, allow ourselves to uh, spin out of control with these uh, uh, with these different things. Then. Finally, um, we have assertive communication. Now, when we talk in assertive communication, assertive communication is our goal, right? It's what we want to do. So with passive passivity or passive communication, we, we, you can think of it as, um, I lose, you win, or you win, I lose, right? And that I am allowing you to just say or do whatever you like, and I'm not really standing up for myself. So you always get your way. And I never get my way. That's passivity or being passive or using passive communication. And then again, the passive aggressive is thought of as a lose lose. Right. So neither one of us really uh, uh, get what we want out of the situation. So I don't stand up for myself. And therefore, you may uh, continue to uh, violate my rights because, you know, you may not even realize that you're doing it or you may not realize that I have a problem with it because I never said anything to you. I never let you know. Um, that this was a problem. And so uh, because I'm being passive in my speech and then again, it's aggressive uh, because again, I do something to kind of disrupt your situation or something that I know that's going to anger you. And so you don't get your way. So I don't get my way and you don't get your way. So it ends up being a lose lose situation. Then aggression, they think of it as a, I win, you lose. Right. So um, I come in, you know, being aggressive and, and, and enforce my will on you so that I get my way, but ultimately, uh, you end up feeling worse and you, you know, you don't get your way. Now, assertive is considered to be a win-win where you are standing up for yourself. You're setting proper boundaries, but at the same time, um, you know, you're taking into consideration the other person's rights and desires and, and the things that they need out of the out of the situation, right? And you're willing to make a compromise because there's nothing wrong with making a compromise, but the compromise shouldn't, shouldn't always be you giving in, nor should it be the other person always giving in, right? So it should be so that we're, we're, we're having mutual benefit. We're getting a mutual benefit from whatever it is that we're trying to do. Um, so when we operate with assertiveness, um, again, we are basically standing up for ourselves setting proper boundaries with the, with the person or people and letting them know um, how we feel about the situation. If we disagree uh, with something that they want us to do or they're as asking us to do or whatever, then we let them know that we disagree, but we, you know, we do it respectfully. And, and if it's something that maybe uh, we could possibly do to help them, but we don't, let's say we don't necessarily want to do it the way that they want us to do it, or we can't do it in the time frame that they want us to do it. And then we kind of work with them and we compromise according to that. And, and this is whether we're dealing with a friend or associate and, and something that we're helping them out and we're just doing it for free or even at, at work at our job. Sometimes it's going to be necessary for us uh, to, it's going to be necessary for us to uh, uh, let our boss even know that, Hey, you know what? Um, you know, I, I enjoy working here. However, uh, this particular thing that you're asking me to do, I'm I'm not comfortable with that, right? And there are a number of re different reasons where you why you may not be comfortable with it. You could be uncomfortable with the situation because 
um, you feel that it's inherently dangerous and and you feel that you would be risking yourself. Let's say if you're a person that's afraid of heights, for example, and um, and and you're asked to do something, maybe a welding job on like a skyscraper or something. And you're like, oh, no. Right. You're not going to put yourself in danger, um, you know, for a job or for anyone else. But you let them know respectfully um, that that that's not OK with you, that you're not going to do it. Right. And, and you're willing to face whatever you got to face because of that. But you stand up and you set those boundaries. Or if someone is speaking to you a certain way or even saying certain things around you in a certain way, you let them know um, that it's not OK to do that. But again, you do it in an appropriate manner. You don't just uh, begin by yelling and screaming and cussing the person out and calling them out of their name. You uh, speak to them in such a way that it's likely that they will respond to your request and um, ultimately, uh, or excuse me, sometimes you may even develop a good, uh, friendship or relationship out of the situation when you are, um, uh, are able to, uh, do things a little differently. So, uh, yeah. So again, the four communication styles, um, passive, passive, aggressive, aggressive, and assertive out of these four. Um, we, we want to operate with, um, uh, assertiveness, right? And, and the assertiveness is something, it, I believe that it, it is something that takes practice over time. It's not like we're going to, you know, get it all in one day, but we can practice and we work on it as we go. Um, so hopefully, um, uh, uh, you are able to, to, you know, understand these concepts and get something from them. But we will, um, you know, get more into it as we uh, continue through the lessons.